So we're into the quarterfinals of the Europa Conference League against Krasnodar. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm thoroughly enjoying this European adventure. So following on from the last episode, our Premier League form hasn't really been that great. We started with a 2-1 home win against Newcastle United. Mohamed Wahab put them in front nine minutes in, but Victor Hugo Cruz and Frankie Grand got two goals in the second half to give us the win. Then disappointing 0-0 home draw against Tottenham Hotspur, but as you can see, their goalkeeper Marcelo Vicaria ended up getting player of the match and we picked up a couple of injuries in this one as well. In the next game, we got absolutely stuffed away from home against Nottingham Forest 2-0. Useless, that's his name. Got the first goal in the 50th minute and Robert Kalmar got the other one in the 63rd. It was a game where we were definitely competitive and I, I would argue, personally, that a draw would have been a fair result. But we got a defeat. And finally, back at home, we did win the next game 4-1 against Huddersfield. Lewis de Cordova getting himself a hat-trick in the first half. Mauricio Chan also getting himself one. And we were pretty dominant in this game. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in third position, 10 points off Manchester City at top. Yeah, we're not competing at the top of the Premier League. Europe is where it's at now, boys. We're not interested in the domestic league. Getting top four is pretty much the aim. We're four points clear from Liverpool, who currently sit in fifth. It's nice to see our former boys fighting us for it, though. Leeds in fourth, Barnsley in sixth, Huddersfield in eighth. It's pretty nice to see, although I do need to keep an eye on West Brom, looking pretty close to relegation. I wouldn't mind if all of our sides are still in the Premier League come the end of this series. A couple of other bits and bobs that to talk about. I am signing in a whole bunch of players for Stoke City before we leave. Um, the, some of them are good, some of them are not so good, some of them are decent, high potential players. This guy's get, we're getting him for two million. It seems like a stupid deal not to be able to pull through. And we're never going to see any of them, unfortunately. Maybe in the 10 years in the future or something like that. But yeah, just know that this money that we did end up getting together in January is going to be spent to hopefully strengthen Stoke City in the future. So we are in the quarterfinals of the Europa Conference League against Krasnodar at home. I believe this is... I don't know, it's, it's two leg. I, I'm completely tripping. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen for Tessia Harza, Genoa, Slavia Prague and Braga in the other legs. Ideally, for Tessia, Hearts, uh, Slavia Prague. <laughs> That's an, an ideal world. But anyway, let's get a kick off and see how our team looks. So we do have a couple of issues. Walter Delonzo returned from his injury and got injured again. I'm not even sure if that was in the last episode or not. I think it might have been. But he is still out for another seven days and two weeks. And of course, we do not have Stelvagen registered for European competitions, which is a bit of an oversight by me. Annabel Zarate is also injured. He is out for another four weeks. He's going to miss the vast majority of the rest of this season. European golden boy has been superb for us. And unfortunately, we've had to do without him for quite a while. Frankie Grand has come in and he's performing pretty well. Here is how Frankie Grand is developing, by the way. He's 18 years old, valued at 25 million. I can't believe this guy was at the club anywhere. Um, but he has really, really shot up, particularly in the physical department. His technicals is what lets him down. Hopefully, he can improve them pretty rapidly. But um, yeah, he's doing okay in replace of Annabel Zarate. In terms of the rest of the squad, then this was how we go on a line-up. Zaverovic will start in goal. Nuno and Zach Howes will start in the centre of defence. Bomber being on that right wing-back role, which he's completely unfamiliar with, but he's okay. Uh, Mario Buckle in defensive midfield with Radic... Ra uh... And let's start Oleg Korobov. He's more attacking. Radek Rada hasn't been performing well in the past five games. So we'll give him the start. Sokolov and Mauricio Chan, of course, will start in the centre of midfield. Victor Hugo Cruz playing in behind Frankie Grand and Luis de Cordova. Let's submit that squad and get into the first leg against Krasnodar. Now, obviously, with us being at home, hopefully we'll just smash them 6-0. And we're absolutely laughing for the uh, return leg. Any familiar names? I don't really see any. Kula, Kulisevsky. Um, and was a decent real-life player. Um, he looks pretty good on this. 36 years old now, though, and his physicals are absolutely diabolical. But a uh, former man from Birmingham City. Signed for Birmingham City at one point. So that's at least a little bit of history linking us to. Let's get the kick off and see how we get on. First highlight of the game comes eight minutes in. Korobov in possession on this left-hand side. Going back to house, we go all the way back to Zaverovic. We know we build up from the back with patient players. Sokolov picks up the ball in the centre, plays it at Buckle. Back to Sokolov. We've got loads of space on that left-hand side. And De Cordova heads it down to Korobov. He whips it in. Frankie Grand is there. And Frank is he offside? 
I don't think he is offside. Frankie Grand's ninth goal of the season. And that is exactly why we are starting Oleg Korobov. His 17 crossing has definitely been pivotal. I think that's his 12th assist so far this season. And yeah, we'll take that nine minutes in. Another highlight. Now Mauricio Chan receives the ball in the box. He, oh my God, how did he save that? Frankie Grand from pinpoint range hits it straight at the goalkeeper. We do get a corner. Cruz plays it in. It's cleared. We don't win the ball. And that's going to be that. Another highlight now, Bomber with a free kick, finds David, was that Bomber taking the free kick? Are we that struggling for free kick takers? Oh, I mean, he does have 16 free kicks, so I guess it's understandable. We have us, <laughs> he's, our, he's our attacking set-piece guy, though. He's the one we aim the balls at, now he's the one tapping the free kick. We are uh, pretty toothless from set-pieces right now, but we do have ourselves another highlight. Krasnodar coming forward this time, can we win the ball back and hopefully get on the counter? Kulisevsky plays it back to Salah Adin. His ball has played inside. Come on, lads. We are well and truly not winning this. Kulisevsky's in behind. I criticise his 36-year-old legs and he nearly made me peer. The highlight does continue, though. Frankie Grant is taken down by Polyakov. And Polyakov gets himself sent off 41 minutes in. So Krasnodar and now one uh, down to 10 men while it's been 1-0 down. Bomber goes close with a free kick and we do get the corner. Who's going to be the man to take this? Victor Hugo Cruz plays it in. Zach Howes is the man. Who's on the end of it these days? David Nuno picks up on the edge of the box. Back to Buckle. Mauricio Chan. Is this going to be a chance? Zach House, Don't shoot. Ah, uh, you should have shot. And there we have it. Half time. Stoke City 1. Krasnodar 0. Uh, hopefully we can go out in the second half and really start putting the pressure on. But we need to take advantage of this uh, extra man. First highlight of the second half comes 49 minutes in. Korobov picks it up from Zach House on the left hand side. They're going down to nine men. He's already on a yellow card. of Yabov. <laughs> Maxim Ryabov, that's what it is, gets himself sent off. Nine men, we really, really need to like start taking advantage of this. If we only win this game 1-0, I'm going to be gutted. 63 minutes in now, we have our second highlight of the second half. Uh, Krasnodar are naturally going to be playing it pretty slow, trying to retain possession and just sitting a little bit deeper, as you can probably see. But they are keeping possession pretty well, and our boys aren't able to win it off them. Sun up war. Switches the player to Salah Adin. They've got plenty of space as well. Come on, lads. We are closing down more. Solikov does the job. And he plays through to Lewis de Cordova. He's in behind. Oh, he hits a post. Come on, Lewis. I tell you what, we are going to keep things fresh. Guido Bomber is going to come off for Radic Rada. And Radic Rada is going to be an inverted wing back. He can't play it. Maybe we'll switch him with Korobov. Uh, Mauricio Chan can come off for Branko Milenkovic. And Mario Buckle can come off for Chris Dubelbis. Obviously... All three subs. We are screwed if we get an injury or a red card ourselves. But with them down to nine men, I really want to save our legs and also one more goal. At least be 2 0. I'll take a 2 0 going in the away leg. Radic Rada's shot is blocked and held by the keeper. The highlight is continuing though. David Nuno's driving forward from centre half. Korobov cuts inside from the right, goes for goal. I tell you what, we might have found a new position for him. And we go again. Zach House switches the plate to the left hand side for Radic Rada, who cuts in. Sokolov goes for goal. Vitali does the business. He gets his 12th goal of the season from centre midfield. And he now puts us 2-0 up. We're far more comfortable with that. <laughs> Obviously, only being 1-0 up with them down to 9 men would have been a massive, massive disappointment from the first leg. But that is a fantastic, fantastic strike by Vitali. Another highlight now. Only 15 minutes left in the game at 3-0. It would look even better as Radic Rada goes for goal. And Pemenov gets an easy save. Come on, lads. Korobov on this left-hand side. Plays it back to Nuno. Chris Dubelbis plays it into Milanovic. Radic Rada's got the ball and he gets his goal. I don't believe that's his goal. That's an own goal. <laughs> I mean, did, was that going wide? Um, let's take a look at the replay. Uh, some decent player by Nuno to Chris uh, Dubelbis to Milanovic to Radic Rada. And this looks like it was that was going well wide. <laughs> How he's been accredited with the goal, I have no idea. But we'll take it. That's his second goal of the season. And uh, we take the 3 0 need. Now, surely we're looking so far out of league. They're going to have suspensions for the next leg as well. So uh, we've got to be through with this. Korobov gets dispossessed, but Chris Jubelbist have got no men sitting up top. They are completely struggling. Radic Rada whips it in. Frankie Grand. Frankie Grand gets his 10th goal of the season. He doesn't need technicals, he doesn't need finishing. He just needs them physical stats to get him in the right positions. Radic Rada with the assist after coming on. What was it about 67 minutes in? He's got an assist on the goal. And Frankie Grant's second goal of the game. I'll not lie, I love Frankie Grant. <laughs> Obviously being a uh, 
an academy prospect that we've been able to bring into the first team and develop ourselves has been nice to see. He's, he's got on to the level where he can play a Premier League football as well, which doesn't usually happen with a save as we don't go 5-0 up because that was offside. Uh, yeah, it's something we don't usually see an academy graduate coming through into our first team and actually being effective when required. And he's got plenty of football this season as well, so I'm happy to see that. How many games he's played? He started 11 games, come on the, off the bench 15, scored eight goals and two assists. That's fantastic for a young English 18-year-old. Well, there we have it then. Stoke City 4, Krasnodar 0. I'll get to the second leg, play this Manchester City game in between. I'm not expecting anything, so don't expect anything yourselves. And I'll see you there. Uh, we've just finished the game against Manchester City. They've got a 91st minute winner. Shai Merman, player of the match with three assists for them. Vic Vitaly Sokolov had put us in front. Uh, they scored two. Victor Hugo Cruz equalised a minute after they went in front. And then Davidovich got a 91st minute winner. Gutten. So here we are back with the second leg. A new formation from Krasnodar. Looks pretty interesting. But we've made some changes ourselves. Rui Rea and Branko Milanovic come in in central midfield. Uh, the back line and everything remains the same, but Barton comes in tap midfield as Victor Hugo Cruz is suspended. And Scafidis comes in for Luis de Cordova. He was our new signing in January who I've barely ever played. And at being 19 years old with similar sort of potential to Frankie Grand, I should probably be giving him some game time as well. So hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. We are 4-0 up, so I'm assuming it won't. But let's get the kick off and find out. First highlight of the game comes 10 minutes in. It's Smirnov in behind for Krasnodar. And we give away a penalty. Mario Buckle with a sliding challenge. And Krasnodar have themselves an opportunity to get their first goal of the tie. And bring the aggregate score at 4-1. And they take it. Hopefully not a sign of things to come. Another highlight now. Mario Buckle plays the ball in from a free kick. Zach Howes gets his third goal of the season. Brings it to 1-1 on the night. 5-1 on aggregate. That is surely now... Far too much for Krasnodar to even contemplate bringing back. Buckle with a decent ball in, cleared by the defence board. Zach Howes on the volley first time. Fantastic. Another highlight now. We are on the attack once again. Frankie Grand coming down the right-hand side. He bombs past a couple. Oh, that would have been such a good goal. Completely done the two defenders, but couldn't quite find the finish. And that is going to be it for the first half. Krasnodar won. Stoke City won. A decent enough performance by us so far. Let's kick off for the second half and hope for some more goals. Another highlight now, first one of the second half, 63 minutes in, Mario Buckle picks up the ball in the centre, he's got loads of room on that left hand side, Radek Rada, we do get it to him eventually, it's whipped in, Frankie Grand is there, and I tell you what, Frankie Grand loves a cross and a header, that's his 11th goal of the season, Radek Rada with the assist once again on that left hand side, and we find ourselves 2-1 up on the night, 6-1 up on aggregate, Rada receiving the ball from Mario Buckle, whips it in pretty early, and Frankie Grand rising highest, beating the goalkeeper. I mean, he's got 13 jumping reach and 8 heading. Um, he is pretty brave, so he's got that going for him. With only 10 minutes to go, we'll look to make a few changes. Rui Rea can come off. We'll bring on Mauricio Chan. Gavin Barton for Andy Dunn. Radek Rada off for Oleg Korobov. Krasnodar on the attack now. 86 minutes in, coming down the right-hand side. Can we win the ball and maybe counter? No, we are not. Smirnov is in behind. He's not offside. Is he offside? I thought he was offside. The assistant referee didn't think so. And it has been given offside. He was about 10 yards. And there we have it full time. Krasnodar 1, Stoke City 2. That gives us the 6-1 win on aggregate. And we find ourselves safely through to the semi-finals. Now, who are we going to be facing? Vitesse or Bayer Leverkusen? Uh, it's, oh, it's Bayer Leverkusen. Vitesse did pretty well in the second leg. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Hearts did beat Genoa. And Braga beat Slavia Prague. So it will be Hearts, Braga... Us Bayer Leverkusen, our toughest challenge yet, with by a comfortable margin as well. Bayer Leverkusen has some very, very good players in their side. So that will be the next episode, boys. Only a couple of games to go in between Manchester United and Birmingham City. And then we will face Bayer Leverkusen at home in the first leg and away in the second leg. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.